mystery theory. This is going to be the disappearance of Citrica Preventure. And if you don't like ASMR videos or the whispering, I have a normal version of this video. I will have it on the top of the screen in the description box and pinned to the top of the comments down below. Just so you know, I felt like I had to do double video for her case because this is a very well-known case in Canada, but not so much here in the US. So I thought, well, we need to share this case more in case somebody here in the US knows something. Now, this case was requested by one of my subscribers that's been for quite some time, I think almost from the beginning of the channel. And I appreciate her making this request and also, you know, giving me some ideas on cases that need to be shared here. I even asked her, you know, what kind of book, or I mean, is there something that I should read that will have the most accurate information about this case? And she told me that there wasn't much information on this case in English. That most of the different videos and clips and things were just in French. And uh, so I took the time to go through all the news and newspapers and articles that I could use in this video. However, if I'm missing something or if there's anything that you want to add, please leave down below. I have a lot of questions, okay, that I will leave for the end because we have to hear the whole story before I ask these questions, but uh, there's a lot of things that I don't know if the police know or if anybody knows, <laughs> actually. And again, I will share them at the end. Now, Citrica Preventure was born on August 29th, 1997. I always, when I think about data birds, I always try to put it into perspective with somebody from my family. And in this case, she would be two years older than one of my sons. He was born on 99, and uh, I just can't begin to imagine what could have been, you know, missing him since he was nine. And now he'll be 19. So just really helps me to put into perspective how much this family is missing this kid and for how long what they miss on you know the freshman year of high school the junior high school years the I don't know it's just data birds they always uh, make me wonder she was described as a very cute freckle faced redhead and I will put a picture of her if I'm sounding a little bit wheezy it's because I am I have asthma so every time I whisper when I'm not having a good asthma day I have that sound and I'm sorry if you can hear it <laughs> I will try my best though whatever parts are crazy wheezy <laughs> now she was from Trois Rivières in Quebec Canada I'm sure I'm butchering it but I tried my best on July 31st 2007 she was nine years old at the time and she was approached by a man looking for his dog he asked Sutrika for help and she quickly got in her bike and started knocking on doors and asking the neighbors if they had seen the dog. One of the witnesses claimed that he saw her coming out of a wooded area with somebody by her, I mean another kid, and that they were closely followed by a man. Now I couldn't find any description of this man, and I, which makes it a little bit frustrating because you don't know how much the police know and if they just have I'm sure they didn't have enough for a sketch or something because I just couldn't find it 
she was also seen on her bike in a local park and on a, in the nearby streets. You know that this was very popular. I feel like in the 80s there were a lot of uh, abductions and going on that they started with this puppy thing. Come here and I'll show you my puppy or I'm missing my puppy. Can you please help me find it? And that kind of thing. So, I also read somewhere that uh, this person tried to pull the same trick the, the day before or a few days before, asking some other kids to help him find the dog. And apparently, he, they, the kids just didn't follow through. They just didn't help him. So, it could have been a tactic that he was using to get kids at the time. Or at least that's what it makes me believe. This was the kind of guy that that's how he got these kids for whatever thing he was using them for. Then at 8.30 p.m. on that same day, her bike was found leaning against a fire hydrant. Which they, you know, after that they, they looked for her and everything but nobody could find her. They knew that something really bad happened to her that she was probably taken the family believed so three days later in August 3rd it was suggested that she has been abducted then on August 8th they issued a wanted note for Cedrica suggesting that she had voluntarily run away and not abducted as previously stated now the media at this point they didn't care and they continued to call the case an abduction but I don't understand how they got to the idea that she ran away maybe because she was seen with this man but I don't understand how a nine year old can decide to run away and even if she did she is in danger and you need to find her so you treat it as the, as the worst case scenario in my opinion and you find this girl it's just not other way, you know, I just don't understand how they can believe that she ran away and that she chose to run away and that they were going to treat her as, she, as if she did because she's nine, she can't do that and somebody knows where she is or somebody took her, so I don't get that idea but again, the media was still treating her as somebody who was abducted and I'm going to talk about the Amber Alert at the end, which is something very frustrating, but something that did change. I read about Cedrica's grandfather. His name is Henry Preventer. He mentioned that they just couldn't stop looking for her. That even eight years after her disappearance, because, yeah, I mean, it took a long time after they, you know, they found her, her body. Even after eight years, they could see posters all over the area. The grandpa also said that they just couldn't give up. That when you lose a child in an accident, there is some kind of closure. Even though it's hard, you know that what happened. But not knowing what Cedrica was leaving at the time. If she was alive, if she was dead, if she was cold, if she was hungry, if she was being abused. They just couldn't take it. It was like they just couldn't give up to move on every day to a new area to look for something different to do something to find her he claimed that it felt like they were in hell every day think about it you wake up in the morning you look for her you have a new hope that today is going to be the day that you'll find her or that you'll find somebody who knows somebody, something and then you go to bed and then the next day and then the next day and it's like you're just repeating the same cycle because you can't give up, you know. Absolutely devastating. On December 11th, 2015, three hunters found human remains in the woods in St. Maurice, a small town near the town where Cedrica went missing. This place was near Highway 40 and again about 15 kilometers from the last place Cedrica was last seen. On December 12th, the next day, it was
was confirmed that it was Cedrica's body. About 200 police officers combed the woods trying to find clues before the first novel. And that's so where I have a lot of questions. So they were trying to look for clues because they thought that she was moved to that area because they knew that she was recently killed because they knew that she was killed a long time ago and was in another place and, you know, they recently moved her. I don't understand because, I mean, it's been years. A lot of snow was in the area over the years and they could have washed all the physical evidence. Did they believe that they moved her there? Again, something that I don't have information to share that. On December 16th, the media revealed that the police had a person of interest who had seen, had been seen around the area where Cedrica disappeared. On August 29th, which was, you know, before then, the police arrested Jonathan Pettens and charged with a six counts of possessing and distributing child pornography involving kids between the ages of eight. Police also, I mean, they arrested this guy for these charges, but they consider him the suspect in Cedrica's abduction and murder. Now, the connection uh, that they found, and I'm not sure if they arrested the guy in August and then in December they put the things, you know, they found something to link them or what the deal was, because again, they are not sharing that information, but the connection that they found is that this guy owned an Acura in 2007 with a silver door with silver door handles and that match exactly the description of the car that was seen at the time of Cedrica's abduction. So I don't know if they were putting the pieces together since August when they arrested this guy and then they, you know, they found the body and then they decided to share this information. I'm not sure how, but of course it's not going to be a crime to own a car that it was similar to, you know, a car that was seen in the area. They don't have any proof that this was the, the car that took her, um, but we don't know otherwise either, you know. We don't know what the police know and not, are not sharing because they don't want to obstruct their own investigation. No, he refused to take a polygraph test or to cooperate with the police in regards of Cedrica's disappearance. But according to a crime journalist, he was also planning to leave the country to go to Switzerland, which is a country with no extradition treaty with Canada. So we don't have anybody confirm as the abductor and killer of Cedrica at this point. And her grandpa, even though he found closure, quote-unquote closure, in finding her body, it still haunts him the idea that they, they can't confirm that this is the killer or whoever did it. He had a lot of uh, frustration with the police at the time, but they just, they even uh, stated that they didn't want to criticize them because they knew that a lot had changed since her disappearance back in 2007. But we all have to agree that it did take them way too long to get into action. And uh, that they treated this as a disap treating this as a disappearance. It was just the wrong choice. They should have treated as the worst case scenario as an abduction and try to find her right away. If you know any kind of information about disappearances, then you know that it's more than likely that you'll find the person alive if you find them within the first 24 hours. If not, the chances go down by the hour. But there was no good communication between police departments. They had to transfer the case from the local police to the provincial police. And uh, basically there was a lot of wasted time. You know, even the grandpa said that the guy could have crossed the border to the U.S. in less than two hours, and it did, and and it take them way longer for the police 
pleased to realize that this was an abduction. Even one of the investigators in her disappearance agrees with the family that there was a lot of wasted time and the abduction idea wasn't introduced quickly enough and that the police was treating this as a disappearance. He even says that their disappearance is treated in a whole different way compared to an abduction. They have different protocols and they have different strategies and things that they need to follow according to what, you know, it is. Even an Amber Alert, I mean, it was never triggered in Cedrica's case because she didn't meet the criteria at the time. She was under 18. She was declared missing and believed to be in danger. Well, she was under 18 and she was missing. They either didn't believe that she was in danger or maybe the declare missing thing it's more for when the kid is taken and not really when they decide to leave which it doesn't make sense because there's no nine-year-old that can decide to leave okay it doesn't make sense here in the u.s it was changed because of skylar's law i have skylar's case if you're interested i'll have that in the description box down below but it will tell you the story that changed the amber alert to minors in danger they don't you know even if they leave in their you know 16 year old that it's in love with whoever and they want to leave they just can't they will be an amber alert for those cases too so i'm hoping that's the same for canada nowadays because an amber alert could have changed this entire story she was nine i mean for goodness sake she had no ability to decide to leave she wasn't old enough but because of all this craziness that changed and also they created a committee that would check on the police in investigations like this i don't have enough information about this committee but apparently it checks on the police that's as much as i know and i'm not sure if this is only for disappearances cases or if it's you know for different investigations too in august 2016 the family had a private funeral to say goodbye now our grandpa has one goal left to not let this happen to another girl. So he wants to find whoever did this to his granddaughter. Now my question is, how did she die? Did they ever find out how she died? I mean, the cause of death in an autopsy or the body was just way too decomposed to find out. She die immediately after she was taken, or was she alive for more, you know, time, and then killed and, and put in that area? I have so many questions that just I can't find the answer to. So I hope that if you have any information about this case, you just share it with me so I can have a better idea. Because I'm sure that if the police can't really solve this mystery, I am not going to solve it myself but it just doesn't make sense in my mind a lot of things and maybe the police is just keeping that information for themselves because this is a case that hasn't been solved yet and it would make sense if they feel like you know whatever they found would lead them to the actual killer but if they release that information and you know it please share it I also, um, I don't know, I, I feel like the Amber Alert, it was a very frustrating thing, and uh, I'm not saying that the police is here to blame, no, the police is not here to be blamed, and the one that should be blamed is, you know, this guy or whoever took her, that changed her life and her family's life. And I feel like the community alive is forever. I just wish that one day this case can be solved. And uh, whoever did this can realize that there is no perfect crime. That they cannot get away with it. That the police will find a little something to find you. And like we share in the Golden State Killer video where, you know, it took them 40 years. Well, 
as long as it takes. But this guy or person needs to be, you know, responsible for what he did to this little girl. I, uh, I don't understand if they have a sketch of this guy either. I don't know. I don't understand how. If somebody saw this guy, or if several people saw this guy, how there is no sketch of the guy. And I think it kind of leaves me with a lesson to pay attention, you know? Sometimes we live our lives so in such a hurry that we don't really understand that we need to take the time to look around, stop looking down into our phones, into our computers into our social media and look up look whoever is in front of you what's in your neighborhood I was talking to the kids I remember one day we were doing some yard work in a house and this was back when the kids were little and uh, we were leaving at the time the, it was an area that it was closed no, it wasn't like a closed community but you know, it, it was a street with and no end, and, uh, so the kids would play in the area, and the parents, we would find any excuse to go out and check on them, because you just, you know, they were little, you can't leave them outside by themselves, and I remember one day, we were doing yard work, and the kids were playing outside, they were playing with a ball or something with the neighbors, and all of a sudden, this lady stops in a car, and starts talking, uh, start to talk to my neighbor, who at the time I think he was seven or eight. Now her parents are divorced and he was living with uh, grandma at the time, so I only assumed that it was the kid's mom that was talking to him. And since my kids were around, I mean they weren't close to the car, but they were, you know, their backs were or I guess they were they were looking in another direction. But they were somewhat close. You know, the kids weren't actually talking to the lady or anything like that. But I remember looking to the side and my neighbor coming to me and they're like, Oh, are they your family member? And I'm like, No. Isn't that, you know, your grandson's mom? And she was like, No. Then who the heck was that girl? Or that lady? And then we all got worried, you know, because it, she did call the police because apparently this person gave this kid, my neighbor, candy. But she did leave. And her, I mean, we were all outside. The entire neighborhood was outside. The grandparents were outside in their yard. They were also doing some kind of yard work. We were doing yard work. Um... I was keeping an eye on my kids, so I didn't know that they weren't by the car, they weren't talking to this lady, so I could only assume that my neighbor was talking to this lady. Now, I am happy that nothing happened, but, um, just so you know, if anything, if that lady took the kid, I don't know what the lady looks like. And then we found out who was the lady, and because, you know, my neighbors called the police, and gave a description of the car, apparently it was somebody who lived in the area, and, you know, it was, nothing happened, the police asked the lady politely not to stop by her neighborhood again, and offer candy to the kids, that wasn't a crime, but it was making the parents a little bit anxious about the thing, okay, so, the point is, I'm telling you this story, because when she came, she had a very big hat, and, uh, like, 1920s, I don't know, it was huge, and it had some flowers, and, uh, <laughs> you just couldn't see her face, you could see what she was wearing, but you just couldn't see her face, because of the, how big the hat was, and the angle that she, she was, at the time when I look inside the car to see who this kid was talking to. And it's sad that we all assume different things.
drugs and then when we started asking the neighbors they were all like well that car is here pretty often I thought that they were somehow your family members no they're not and then they were like aren't they yours because there are some time that car is parked by your house and then they're like no we don't have any family members so apparently this lady was kind of creeping on the kids I don't think she had bad intentions I think she was an uh, uh, lonely lady that maybe she just wanted to talk to the kids but I'm sorry that no you don't do that so long story short again this just goes to show you that sometimes we need to pay more attention that we need to look around that we need to be attentive if we think that something is not right we should say something and we shouldn't assume things like I did that day like my neighbor did that day and the rest of my neighborhood did that you know at that time thinking that this car was somehow part of anybody's family because they were parking everywhere in the neighborhood and they didn't live in the neighborhood itself they live about five I mean this lady lived about five blocks away from where we used to live so as creepy as that sounds it taught me a lesson and now I know the color of your eyes when you walk by my street I will notice if there is a new car and I will ask the neighbor even if I sound a little bit no nosy you know I, I don't care I just feel like that left me thinking that we all need to be aware and that we all need to watch out for each other keep each other safe and I hope that's something that we can all get out of this as well in the meantime while the police are looking for the responsible person for this at least we can all be more aware of our surroundings and keep an eye out not only for our kids but for everyone around us it only takes somebody to pay attention so when something like this happens, we can make it easier for the investigation and hopefully bring child that child home. I hope you enjoyed this video. Not because it was, you know, a good thing, because it, it, it has to be a result, but, but I hope that I give you a good idea of the basics of what happened and that we can elaborate